Hey comic readers and welcome to another episode of Back Issues of Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. Here's a book I never thought we'd ever do, but there's gonna be a movie about it. Maybe. Yeah, Maybe. What? Well, I mean... I mean, they said there was, right? Sure, yeah, they said a lot of things. <laughs> of course, Wildstorm was a studio created by Jim Lee and Brandon Choi that was a subdivision of Image Comics, or more or less a separate entity that worked within Image Comics to produce a line of books, including Wildcats and Gen 13 and Stormwatch. Okay. okay. Now, Stormwatch <laughs> was, this is interesting, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, all of the characters and teams that Jim Lee and company created for Wildstorm are state or corporate sponsored superheroes. Like, huh. Wildcats is owned by a corporation. Stormwatch is run by the UN. Deathblow is a soldier in the military. Gen 13 was created by a government contracted company. Yeah. The authority doesn't even show up until after the DC acquisition, but before the DC integration. Okay. So the authority is written by Warren Ellis with art by Brian Hitch. It comes out in 99, it takes place in 99, okay. and Addressing the elephant in the room really quick. Warren Ellis is a creep. Moving on. You don't get the authority without Stormwatch. Okay. But... But, but he didn't... But Jim Lee made Stormwatch. Right? Warren Ellis made Stormwatch interesting. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. And then killed it to make way for the authority. <laughs> oh, he was like, hey, you know what would be better is if it was my team? Oh, my God. You have no idea. <laughs> Warren Ellis would create characters to join Stormwatch and, and had to just make room with all the other original characters that he didn't create. Mm -hmm. And then he had things take place that killed almost everyone on Stormwatch who coincidentally wasn't created by Warren Ellis. Wow. And then the survivors <laughs> became the authority. <laughs> and it's great because it was like a one-two punch. He right. like ended Stormwatch and then Wildstorm was like, let's do a crossover with Dark Horse. Wildcats versus aliens. Warren Ellis, you write that. And he's like, I don't want to do that. And they're like, you can do whatever you want. And he's like, okay. So the Stormwatch team operated out of like a floating space station and they destroy it because it's infested with xenomorphs. And any other remaining characters that Warren Ellis didn't want to deal with were murdered by xenomorphs. <laughs> so in a crossover? Yes. This is born out of a crossover. In, in part. Okay. The funny thing is... Wow, you could call it the most successful crossover ever. I mean, you could. <laughs> actually we, spawned a permanent thing. Yeah, we almost did it on the show, and I was like, this is so esoteric and off the rails. <laughs> there's no reason to even deal with it. Plus, there's so much backstory and explanation. Like, who even... Look, are what? these even the Wildcats? Like, what are they even doing here? This is, this is a secret Stormwatch assassination book. <laughs> this has nothing to do with Wildcats. They're in it. You know, like Zealot and Grifter, they deal with xenomorphs on the space station before they drive it into the sun. Uh, you gotta be sure. That's right. Like, it is inexorably connected to Stormwatch because, of course, Stormwatch was a UN-sanctioned team of heroes, and it's, no. Like, it's just <laughs> Jim Lee, Brandon Choi, and company's, like, young blood. Yeah, they're mm. just like, uh, here's a bunch of, by the time just I- Just like their team. Yeah, like, like I was, well they already had, I mean like the reality is they had like Gen 13, right. they had Wildcats, Wild yeah. they, they didn't need Stormwatch, but they, but they did, <laughs> and so they made it. And when I was a kid reading all those books, by the time Stormwatch came along, I was like, this is a bridge too far. <laughs> too That's <many>. enough. <laughs> I, well, I was like, you know, all of these books kind of look the same. Yeah. Like, it all looks like bullshit. Well, what was Stormwatch's thing? They were a UN-sanctioned team. Oh, where That's did they come from? What if the government had an Avengers? I'm like, that sounds boring and lame, and indeed it was. Every time that I would look up or hear about the Authority, I would hear, they are a team of superheroes who get the job done. And when I hear that, I hear things like the boys. Yeah. You know, I hear words like subversive and counterculture <laughs> and, you know, paradigm shifting. <laughs> and the byline for most people's endorsement of the authority is like, they're a team of superheroes who aren't afraid to kill. And I'm like, oh, that sounds grossly unappealing. <laughs> so the authority paves way for a number of things. Without the authority, you don't get the MCU. What? What? That's what's so messed up about it. <laughs> 
is that I it's going to be a decent movie. I can't wait to see what figure? happens. Because uh, it is drawn by relative newcomer to the scene, Brian Hitch. And Brian Hitch, who is just going for broke on this book, is paving the way for what was referred to at the time as widescreen comics. Cinematizing comic mm. books in a way where you just got these incredible, almost realistic, but still have one foot in the fantastic uh, scopes of insane, awesome, real-looking stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so it made it feel like a action blockbuster at every turn. Mm -hmm. And so you, you got this sense of grandiosity. Brian Hitch would then be poached by Marvel to pioneer the Ultimates, who was, of course was the ultimate <laughs> version of the Avengers, right. who were the inspiration for a lot of the stuff you saw in the MCU and more specifically in the Avengers movie. Mm -hmm. oh. I think that without Brian Hitch and to a lesser extent the authority, but really the, the, the bombacity from which the authority came on the scene, getting these, you know, the, the cachet for Brian Hitch mm -hmm. and making him poach by Marvel, like without all that and without like displaying Hitch's skills, Marvel doesn't poach him, he doesn't revolutionize the Avengers through the Ultimate Universe and so there's no like really easy touchstone for the Avengers for like Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So I think that there is some there's an argument that can be made that like widescreen comics pioneered by Brian Hitch helped pave the way for widescreen movies starring superheroes. Is the storytelling also sort of like a, like a blockbuster? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Oh, it, this is this 12 issue volume is arguably the best of the series. Uh, Hellas would leave the book after this, and then uh, Mark Miller would jump on hmm. and do his thing. <laughs> uh, but Frank Quitely drew it, so at least it looks like Frank Quitely drew it, which is either good or bad, depending on your opinion about Frank Quitely. I happen to dig his work, so it looks pretty cool and rad, but and maintains the scope. Mm. Mm. But it's Mark Miller. Uh, there's three chapters in the first volume of The Authority, which is available in the comments down below for you to pick it's up like a copy a three if you want to. structure. Exactly. Uh -huh. and it's, Does anyone fight a giant spider? Uh, <laughs> they fight giant stuff, but not a giant spider. It's a shame. Go. <laughs> <laughs> the first bad is Earthbound, the second one is Interdimensional Bound, and the third one is Cosmically Bound. So it's like you got to build Cosmically up. less than Interdimensional? No, it's, it's higher. It, go, it ratchets it up, trust me. <laughs> okay. I don't know. It's it gets bigger each I just time. I feel like interdimensional is probably. I don't know. No, no, no. no, no. Okay. Trust me. Yeah. Okay, okay. Again, I, I think that if you were to divorce this from Stormwatch, it would almost be stronger. And it's weird how much Ellis refers to his Stormwatch stuff. Huh. But like he's, he's trying to give it give it uh, credence. Like I, this isn't just out of nowhere. This is oh, rooted I, in the beloved yeah, Stormwatch. It's not like I wrote this ten years ago and I'm just folding it into whatever established thing I'm working on at the moment. No, it's it definitely yeah. established in this it's, universe. It came organically from what came before yeah, it. It's, and it's part of the shared universe of Wildstorm, despite the fact that world-ending events take place and no other Wildstorm <laughs> characters but the ones I invented are to be found. <laughs> mm. well, Suspiciously. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost like it's an original graphic novel. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, I mean, he does at least get a chance to use that continuity to not explain who anyone is. <laughs> and just go, here's here's Jenny Sparks, you're right. gonna love her, and if you were reading Wildstorm Black, you already did. <laughs> because it wasn't like Stormwatch was already a runaway success. Uh, <laughs> they needed to break it up into multiple teams, and one of them was like Stormwatch Black, which is like a black ops team that Warren Ellis created that is starring almost everyone on the authority. <laughs> so, uh, we go to Moscow in the opening of the book, and Moscow is just leveled by flying dudes with full black unitards with a suspicious logo on their chest. Oh. And you just how many? watch, uh, well, you're not quite sure how many in the beginning, but let's just say it's hundreds of thousands later on. Whoa, that's awesome. You know, <laughs> I know what like a castle looks like when it blows up, when it's drawn <laughs> in the Marvel style, but like that looks like Moscow just blew up. Okay. Right. Whoa, you know, I'm just yeah. trying to bring you back. To like it would if I was watching it if it was like Independence Day. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, there's an Independence Day moment in this book. And you're like, <laughs> okay. So in New York City, we have the remnants of Stormwatch. And 
it's relegated because they disbanded Stormwatch afterwards. Well, most so. of them are dead. They're, most of them are dead, and also, yeah, there's and, and the ruler, the leader of it, Henry Bendix, uh, became a power-hungry madman and was murdered by Jenny Sparks, and so, uh, you know, there's no need for, for anybody to really c carry that uh, that mantle mm. uh, of Weatherman, by the way, which is the, the name of the person who leads Stormwatch. You see the... <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, Christine and Jackson are uh, heading up the, like, super... the the, the, the actual government agency that I guess would be what Stormwatch's purview was, which is relegated to two people chain smoking in a room with a couple of computers. <laughs> and of course, like because they're not superheroes and they don't have superheroes to command, uh, they just, they saw Moscow get leveled and they go, boy, I hope whatever leveled Moscow doesn't come here. <laughs> like, that's where we are. Right. There's, There's no nobody Stormwatch. nobody to respond to it. And we don't know Wildcat's phone number. So <laughs> we find out that the uh, the perpetrator of this is uh, Kaizen Gamora, who is a character that Warren Ellis created from Stormwatch. And it's like, okay, oh my, oh my god. god. And okay. he is a Fu Manchu send up. He's a silly character, uh, but he doesn't embrace, he visually embraces all of the stereotypes that you would see in like an exploitation movie or comic book. He rules this island nation of Gomorrah, that's the name of the fake country that we can blow up. Uh -huh. And uh, in the previous Stormwatch story that Kaizen Gamora is introduced, uh, he is a terrorist, or at least he runs a terrorist country, essentially. Like, we breed terrorism here. Right. And uh, he declares uh, war on the Western world, and Henry Bendix and the Stormwatch uh, Black Ops group uh, make quick work of a, a little over 300 people in his country because the UN was like, don't retaliate. And they're like, all right, we'll quietly just w go land on the beach of his country and then just roll over, kill about like 312 of them or whatever, and then stop and then go home. Just to show him like, we, we could get at him if we want to. <laughs> And uh, he, like he saw that as a gross injustice. And uh, again, there's no like citation that says, oh, that happened in Stormwatch number 41 or whatever. But, right. Like, it, it, I'm sure he took that well. well he did not. He, uh, he took it uh, in a way where he's like, he, he, he rallied his forces. He built a special force field to go around his country to keep it from being uh, invaded by any rogue superhero teams that might find that idea uh, palatable. Right. And uh, proceeded to and I'll just cut to the quick with this one, <laughs> engineer an army of clones. Uh, Kaizen Gamora is also a crazy jerk who murdered his brothers and used their genetic material combined with his mother's to engineer these soldiers that he sends to annihilate countries. Okay. Okay. Uh, he also has like a special logo. It's all about branding uh, for his clan, country, and family. Different and than the one on his, his hat. He has a separate logo on his hat. Yeah, and that one is uh, irrelevant. Don't worry about that. Oh, okay. That's just uh, Brian Hitch's embellishments. No, I the see. logo is a circle with uh, three dots. And if you superimpose that logo over the globe, uh, you'll see that the first like knot in the circle is Moscow. So it's his kind of like secret warning to the world, like these are the places I'm gonna strike to carve my name onto the surface of the earth. Not unlike uh, Chairface Chippendale writing his name on the surface of the moon from the tick. This is some pretty crazy stuff I we're seeing. I assumed that was like gonna be some sort of element thing. No, or... yeah. it's his logo. It's, it, it's a logo which is derived from the thing he's going to do <laughs> yes. before he creates the logo. <laughs> yes. Right. Well, it represents my family. It's me and my brothers. Don't you have oh. to specifically hold it over the globe in a very distinct right. way? Right. Yes. Well, if you start with Moscow, you'll know where what, what position it goes in. I see. And if you're I looking at it from a particular what, angle. It's, it's a circle. Yeah. Couldn't you just flip it the other way then? What you if, could, but you'd be wrong. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, I could, I could orient it any possible way it's with true. Moscow anchored at one of the points. <laughs> yeah, I could true. just spin it around Moscow. Right, but it's really not very effective at all. But <laughs> if you do it in a particular way, the second knot oh, is sure. London, yeah. so you'll know how to follow the... the, the oh, the, I see. So uh, then you'll be able to get the third one. Ex which is Los Angeles. Ah. So now we can care. Right. Uh, but actually, <laughs> a, a, a not unsurprising amount of members of authority are British, because mm. so is Warren Ellis. Right. Uh, but... Anyway, that's so that, these clones he makes. Yeah. I saw them shooting lasers out of their eyes. Uh, they're like Superman. They're like super clones. They're not quite Superman. They're not uh, quite as powerful. They can be killed uh, by 
lesser superheroes than Superman. Wait, Wait. hang on. Could you answer one question for me? Yeah. Uh -huh. This is written when they're owned by DC. They are already owned by DC Thank by this you. point. Yes. Okay. Yes. But they but operate they are, as a, can't play as a the whole. Same. They cannot. They okay. are. They. They wouldn't even dream of it. Right. Mm. Okay. They're on their own universe. So who are the players here? I see a, I see a, a woman with a All right. Union Jack. Yes, meet the authority. <laughs> uh, so we got Jenny Sparks. Jenny Sparks is known as the spirit of the 20th century. And I am what like- What the hell does wait, that mean? Exactly, what? exactly. And I hate when people explain what the authority is and they just go, so Jenny Sparks is the spirit of the 20th century. Anyway, uh, this is Jack <laughs> Hawksmore. And it's like, whoa, 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 what does that mean? And essentially, they're saying uh, Jenny Sparks was born at the birth of the 20th century. She was born like on January 1st, yeah, so were a lot of 1900. People. Yeah, but she also looks like she's 19. Right. But she's over 100, she's almost 100 years old. Uh, she was created by causality as a number of century babies to defend. There were no super, there, this is a fresh world that has government sponsored and created characters that have, that have powers. Essentially, we're, the, the Earth is going to be under siege by crazy crap. And so existentially speaking, the Earth itself, not like it was a sentient being, but like causality birthed a number of people who could and will defend the Earth from these future external threats. And okay. Jenny Sparks is one of them. <laughs> so, so it's, it's sort of like what a- What is her ability? Her ability is actually electricity. <laughs> oh. She can, sparks, right. She, yes, she can right. control and generate like electrical fields. So that's Jenny How Sparks. How come, you said there were multiple people that this there happened were, to. And Why did they all call the spirit of the 20th century? Like, what's different about her? She's the only one who made it? Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. It's not like there's like a hundred of them running around right now. Nah. Oh. No, no, she's the only one who made it. I see. Uh, do we do we see the other ones like get killed in like wildcats and stuff? Yes. Or? Oh, yes, okay. you do. All right. Uh, there's actually a story that is, of course, uh, in Stormwatch that predates this in which there is a Superman analog, and there's like always a Superman analog for some reason. In Wildstorm, there's like four of them. But that one, the High, he attempts to make the world better. He's just like, you know what? I'm Superman. I know what's best. I've been around a while. I'm gonna make the Earth a better place. And he enlists, he enlists a couple of characters, the Doctor and the Engineer. The Doctor and Engineer are also dead and their replacements are members of the authority. Uh, but okay. the High, the reason why I even bring it up is because the High will eventually be betrayed, or at the very least he'll be defeated by uh, a world that doesn't want him to change it. And uh, that will be the fall of Henry Bendix as well, who's of course the weatherman of uh, Stormwatch. But uh, they have like a, a shield around their orbiting space station that will eventually be destroyed uh, as a result of xenomorphs. <laughs> and uh, the High will be so overwhelmed with like rage and anger that he'll like, fly at the space station to take it out, not knowing that it's like staffed by hundreds of people and that Jenny Sparks, his friend and potential lover, is on that space station. So they turn on this like this energy field around the ship to protect themselves. And because he's going so fast and he's blind by rage, there's no way to contact him to tell him like, stop flying or you will smash into our shield and die. Uh, so he does. <laughs> oh. Sucks to be him. Yes. But that just happened? That happened, yes, actually, this? like when when they ended Stormwatch. I see, so they're gonna be talking about it. They're gonna mention it. Well, okay. but actually, they're not gonna, that's the thing, <laughs> is that it's gonna come up again. Okay. And Jenny Sparks is gonna be like really upset that it's gonna happen again, but she doesn't say it's gonna happen again. She just is really, really right. upset about it. So if you didn't it. read Stormwatch, so you're like, why is she so why worked she up so over this? so worked up? Because the high did it and he Because it's died. similar to a thing that happened in a book you didn't read. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not included in the volume, and it's unnecessary so, for you to enjoy the authority. Wait, wait, the high is not the same as the Weatherman, right? No, the, the Weatherman Superman. runs Stormwatch. The high was a Superman analog who actually was a rogue agent. Like he would be, he was just a Superman. Uh -huh. He didn't work for anybody. Okay. He doesn't sound and like much of a problem. Superman if he could die by flying into a force field. Yeah, well, I mean, if you, if, 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 Superman is still, he is vulnerable. You know, Superman could, I mean, He's not gonna Doomsday die punched explosion. him so hard well, that his brain hammered. Yeah, but Doomsday was Kryptonian. Yeah. Ish. Ish. Anyway, so. Hang on, so. We're just, we're on one character. I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs>
so the two guys at the beginning, the two people, they, are, they were the old Stormwatch people. They were on Stormwatch Has and they the were agents. Has the authority been formed yet? No. Okay, well, cool. yes, oh. but oh. they are about to reveal themselves. Oh, we don't oh, know it okay. yet. That's no. Okay, okay, okay. Exactly. Sorry. Go up. So, okay. proceed. Let's Jenny Sparks <laughs> leads the authority and she's the oldest and she's the one who, after being a member of Stormwatch Black, is like, screw government sanctioned super teams. Right. I think I reject that entire concept. Yes, I, like, I would like to start a new concept. How, yes, how do they know what it's like to be super? We're the authority on that. <laughs> oh, 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 I mean, kinda. Yeah, she's more or less like I've been around long enough. I know what's best, or at least I think I do, and yeah. so I'm just gonna make decisions because I'm powerful enough to do that. And so let me get <laughs> Why a- Why would I subject myself to the whims of mere mortals <laughs> well, in I the United <laughs> Nations? <laughs> okay, it's not quite as fascist as it sounds. <laughs> so, then we have Swift. Uh, sh we'll go to her because it's the shortest. Uh, she has bird powers. Anyway, moving on. Like Angel? Uh, no, like, because oh. her feet can become talons. Like, she gets oh, bird like powers. Like, more so. Yes. I see. That's kind of cool. Yeah, she's fun, she's cool, she's durable and flies. And we have Jack Hawksmore, uh, and this is the one you're really gonna enjoy. Uh, Jack Hawksmore can tap into the power of cities, literally can tap into a city and then manipulate it, but it has to be a city. And like the, the, the people in it? No, <laughs> the city. Like the subway? Like all everything that makes the, the city. Subways, concrete, what? buildings, what? glass, so wait, pipes. Goes if he goes to like a village. It doesn't work. It right, he needs to be in his, but is it like Inception where he's like moving bridges around and stuff? He can do stuff? that, yes. Oh, okay. But he derives power from the city. The bigger the city, the more powerful he is can be. Is he called be. the city planner? <laughs> Since we're going with like a theme with weathermen and so forth, like yeah. we take mundane jobs for super people. I mean, they call him like the god of cities because they're all like kind of representative of gods of things. Like, so he goes to Moscow and he starts bleeding from the nose. Because, Is that because it's destroyed? Because the city's hurt, you see. I, oh. Yes. So he can also be hurt. He doesn't just. Oh yeah, no, he's not like he's, invulnerable. I mean, he, he's. So like if a big fight takes out, is it just waylay him? Because like if buildings are being destroyed, he's like, oh, ooh, uh. He doesn't like get distracted by them, but he does get weakened by the city being weakened. So right. would, like, if a city was like annihilated, would he die? Well, he only well, has a bloody go nose from going to a city that was just annihilated. So it sounds like a lot has to happen. It, it for has him to, to take a lot. Like Moscow's leveled. The city is hurting. You know what I mean? And if no one fixes it, then the city will die and he won't be able to tap into it anymore. I see. Uh, so that's Jack Hawksmore. <laughs> and he just runs around, he's barefoot, and he like just like zips through cities and- He's barefoot, because his feet have to feel the connection to the city. <laughs> yes. And if you're feeling like kind of Grant Morrison a little bit, <laughs> uh, strap in, because it, it gets more Morrisonian as we go. Great. But I kind of like it more, and I'll tell you why. We get in and we get out. Yeah? Like we do a Grant Morrison thing and then we get the hell out of there. <laughs> we don't live in it. We don't live in it, we don't dwell in it, we don't swim in it, can and we, just bathe in it. <laughs> can we meet some more characters that I might enjoy? Okay, how about the oh doctor? Oh boy. Okay, the wait. doctor is Doctor Strange. Uh, he is, oh. the idea is that the doctor is, uh, no, the doctor's the avatar. There's a lineage of doctors that the Earth produces or He's like chooses. Doctor Who? Eh, he's like the Dalai Lama, he's like Doctor I Who. I don't he's... really know anything about Doctor Who. <laughs> Neither do I. So the well, doctor- There's only 12 of them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But uh, the they, doctor they do while, is but... a title that is bestowed upon the emissary that is decided by the earth. There's a lot of that going it on. It is like Doctor Strange. And yeah. uh, so the previous doctor bequeathed his title to this random dude. He can tap into his past lives. He can consult with previous doctors. Yeah, that is like the Avatar. Exactly. The previous doctor, who was definitely on the High's plan, he was like, "Yeah, let's do this. Let's take over and make things better." Uh, that one is his is is our doctor's uh, kind of like spirit guide. It was like, "Hey, mm -hmm. I know you're new to this. Let me tell you how things work, but only piecemeal, so that you can like ask questions and be confused no, and not say the this guy. Me. That's this guy. I see. So the doctor. Uh, oh, and when he got his power. Uh, you know, because it just all came to him once. It wasn't like he trained for this. Mm -hmm. uh, he immediately like went to drugs and was just like, I need to forget about this. We went to like Amsterdam and just like started using heroin. <laughs> oh. And uh, eventually they like pulled him out of it and they're like, hey, knock it off. You're part of the, the authority now. Right. You're gonna save the world, knock it off. Yeah, and he's like, oh. <laughs> There's also a great moment in this book where we like look back at all the, art, the, the iterations of the doctor. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one of them is this like 
blonde-haired English dude with a brown leather trench coat, and I'm kind of like, hmm. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> you can't I kind of like that. the idea that, that Constantine was the doctor once, and he was like, no. <laughs> but uh, okay, again, it's in the background. It was like it's more of an Easter egg. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not. An, it's not canon, unless right. it is. I don't know. Oh, even if it is, the, the, the everyone from Wildstorm was folded in during the New Fifty Two, which of course right. doesn't exist anymore. Uh. So. That version of him wouldn't have been the dog. It doesn't matter. So uh, who's Metal Lady? Metal Lady is the engineer. So the ah. original engineer. So, so it's a new engineer as well. Yes, new engineer, <laughs> who was created for this book. So who gets the money if you put a character <laughs> in your book that's the same name as another character, yeah, but it's a and different it's directly connected to the previous engineer? Right, that wouldn't exist without that engineer. You uh -huh. still call her the engineer, but her person name yeah. is different. Who gets paid? I, I feel like Ellis gets paid for that for Angie. The female engineer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because he even though he didn't create one. the idea of the engineer. Right. No. Hmm. Although I don't know. I think he did invent the previous engineer as well. Oh. Okay. So, the engineer Angie is. Uh, she's also new to this. Her, her blood was replaced by nanites. Not unlike no. Bloodshot. Uh, nine Not nanites. Nine are they pints. quantum nanites? Just They're, to really get even? Just really to <laughs> really hammer home? I think home. nanites are quantum nanites by definition. <laughs> oh, okay. They're all quantum nanites. Can we call them that then? I would rather not because they don't in the book. So <laughs> she replaced nine pints of blood with nanites. It wasn't like she elected to do that. It happened. Okay. Uh, and because... The engineer dies, right? And oh, I, she had a hospital, and they were like, "No, it wasn't like she got a transfusion." Nine pints like, of blood, the amount of blood that you have. That's what they say in the book. Oh, okay. So, but uh, <laughs> I was like, I think it's four and a half quarts. That's nine pints. That's, nine pints. that's all your blood. That's all her blood. <laughs> yeah. So her blood has been replaced by nanites, and so she can like do anything. I see. Whatever, whatever the book. Whatever looks, we she need looks her to metal. do. Metal. Yeah, she looks metal, but only when she's like using them. You know, like if she, she wants, they could like, recede, and she could look like a person. Ah. So that's the engineer. Cool. Uh, she's convenient. Uh, then we have Midnighter and Apollo. Midnighter and Apollo, or Batman and Superman. Those are the only two by name that people know. That I know, and yeah. really, it was only Midnighter. Yeah. <laughs> like I did. I was like, I could not tell you what Apollo looked like or does. Right. But Midnighter. Yeah. I'm like, yes. Yes. So Midnighter and Apollo are actually experiments uh, conducted by Henry Bendix back during the Stormwatch days. Uh, Midnighter. Does that mean Midnighter has actual powers? Yes, Midnighter has ah, powers. Okay. He, well, and there. It's not really Batman then. No. <laughs> He's not at all. Oh. He's not Batman at all. He's just evocative visually. He looks kind of like Batman. I see. And that's what we're doing. Uh, Midnighter can predict your moves like a million times over. Like, so like, he's like, I've, I've fought this fight a million times. I know how, like what you're going to do before you do it and I win. So isn't he like unstoppable? <laughs> so it's, he's, he's, he's thematically Batman. I see. <laughs> <laughs> and Apollo is, so he, he, he draws energy from the sun, and he can do Superman stuff. Right. Fly, strong, durability, eye lasers, all that. Cool. And okay. they're gay. That oh. I know. And they're together. I see. Uh, this was something that I already knew, because even if I didn't read The Authority until much later in life, I had already heard about Midnight and Apollo. Right. Yeah. And, but, but let me tell you something. In 1999, 2000, that kind of shook things up a little bit, right? And like people sure. talk about like what issue in the authority they establish that they are to get that they're a couple. What's the carrier? The carrier. Is that their... That's their. That's their base, which what, is like. What am I looking at over there? You're uh, looking at a it, sentient spaceship that can work between that, that exists between reality, and oh. it, it, there's a whole thing associated well, with the carrier. It sails really on big? higher dimensions. It is, it is 30 miles high by 50 miles wide. Oh, I was going to say, it looks like there's like a city inside of it. Yeah. But, so I guess oh, there well, is. Oh, for, for John, so he feels comfortable. Right, exactly. Is his name John? Uh, Jack. Jack, damn yeah. it. So, That's for Jack. Yeah, so but he the, feels comfortable there. But there's only like eight of them. Yeah, it's big. Well, thankfully, the carrier can produce doors, they call it a door, uh, teleporters anywhere on the face of the earth or within the carrier. Where did it come from? They found it. Oh. Like, this is a lot. Yes. This is a lot. This is was a lot. Was it a setup? I was say, it previously this... established in Stormwatch? No. It was established right here? Right now. What? Yeah. That should be a whole story by itself, like getting this cool ship. I know. It's not. I love how It's they... just like, it's here, except I kind of like that. Yes, that's this book. Well, Every time they're like, here's a high concept. Uh, Moving on. We'll talk about it later. Or not. Or or we won't. Or we won't, and you'll be all the better for it. 
because nobody cares. Like that, they found an interdimensional spaceship that. Lit, okay, so <laughs> they also and then they also established the other thing about the re, about reality itself. Oh God. The ship, the carrier, it exists in the bleed, and the bleed on the outside of the pages. Right. It's a little oh. comic book reference, but it's it's the barrier between realities. So yeah. So yes, it's the it's. It's the bleed on the page. It's the bleed on the comic book page. As a result, the carrier can then exist anywhere, well, it exists anywhere on Earth because it's tethered to the Earth itself, but it also can take you anywhere like in reality or through realities. And uh, so that's why that's how their doorway can be on any at any point on Earth because it's tethered to the Earth and it also ex operates within the bleed. So they can go anywhere. But it also doesn't want to like leave the like orbit of Earth because it's seemingly like whoever left it there, the carrier is hoping they'll come back. So it's like Ray from Force Awakens. How is it in the orbit of Earth if it's also well, it exists between within dimensions? Because between dimensions. So it's like, but is there the, an Earth in all those dimensions? Seemingly. And it operates at 26 dreams per second uh, throughout the known quantum verse of uh, eternity. It, it, and that's the Grant Morrison stuff. Like read, yep. read the little caption next to the carrier. Moving down wake through the Devacanic realm at a speed of 25 dreams per second. And it's just like, anyway, moving on. <laughs> and that's the kind of stuff where I'm like, uh, thankfully I was already familiar with Grant Morris's work. Right. So I could go, okay, uh, okay, I know okay yeah, let's move on. <laughs> and so every time you will see an establishing shot of the carrier, you'll get another silly ass explanation about where they are or when they are or whatever they're seeing. You're like, and, and by the way, because Brian Hitch is drawing it, like it looks pretty phenomenal. There's a moment where they're operating through telepathic space, and all of the latent telepaths of creation, their minds are melding as, as one, and it's just this like endless seascape of heads, and I'm like, that's kind of cool, even though what? <laughs> so, uh, what is happening in this book, though? Well, we're establishing like this. I know. Yeah. This is the team. This Jenny is where Sparks they were. formed it, yeah. and she's like, "My the uh, the whole thing is Stormwatch, a team created by the government, or at least run by the UN. Yeah. It was a colossal failure because they had all these like the rules. Problem, yeah, the problem was the government. Yes, not right. that we not that we were like harangued by, by a by a megalomaniac or murdered by all kinds of random crap. Yeah, we were killed by a bunch of xenomorphs in a cross. Yeah, don't worry about them. It has nothing to do with that. Incidentally, they never come up again. It's weird." Because they were such a problem, but <laughs> well, they're they in the sun now, so they, yeah. they're not a problem. Those xenomorphs were. Oh, there's more. I mean, like, they of course there are. Oh, there's always it's an more. alien book. Yeah, oh. there's always a queen. The authority are these characters. Yeah, mm -hmm. they operate. Their base of operations is this interdimensional spaceship they found. So they don't know everything about it, so they're right. kind of learning it. Oh, and it's powered by a miniature universe. So they <laughs> operate. That is like this the most believable thing that you've told me about this ship. <laughs> yeah, true. I feel like I can kind of conceptualize I'm like, that. Yeah, okay. Oh, and you'll see the engine room. So sweet. That ship is also like alive, and it like kind of sort of communicates with them, uh, and it's happy to help them in their plan. You, you know what it is? Yeah. This looks like on the cover. This is a edgy superhero book, right? And now you're hitting me with 25 dreams per second. Yes, right. which seems like it'd come from something that I would normally read. Yes, right. And that's why I dig the authority because you you think from anyone's depiction of it that it's just some Garth Ennis bullshit, uh -huh. where it's like here's something that's hateful and devoid of any hope, but it comes from a place of originality, ingenuity, and it's not trying to go like, hey, superheroes are dumb. Like this is the first super team in this universe that is not tethered by a special interest group. Uh. Okay. Except for themselves, but the interest is we're going to make the world better. Right. But also not they're not going to go but They haven't done anything yet. Well, no, no, that's only that's, that's my fault. To. That has nothing to do with that. <laughs> I mean, like, but Moscow has blown up. Well, yeah. they, they and just, it looks like London's going uh, down. That's about to. It's about to, yes. So, they're, they're just moving right along. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. And, yeah. the, and they're in the bleed. They're in the bleed, and they're in the, the carrier. Bleed. But well, like, they're, they're, they're moving from dimension 11, and then they're tacking into the bleed next. Oh, Thank you. okay, cool. Thank so you. they contact Christine and Jax, and the authority do, and they're like, hey, and they're like, whoa, Jenny, what are you doing here? And she's like, I need all the information you have in Moscow. Stat. And they're like, who are you? And she's like, we answer to a higher authority. And then she leaves. And she, they, they give her a disc, because they're like, we're, we're our hands are tied. We're 
powerless. Right. At least sure. we can give you this information. Exactly. And then Jenny tells the team, like, so I, I, I hooked up with Christine, and like, I just told them we need their information. The reality is we have the engineer, we have the doctor, we have the, the carrier. We, we don't need them. Oh. But I wanted to establish communications with like a governing body, right. and so they feel like they're involved. Right. So maybe they'll also maybe they'll call us yes, when they want something. Exactly. And then we're like, we'll do it, but we'll do it our way. Yes. We don't answer to you. That's right. And right. so it's like Jenny knows. Like Superman or for the president calling Superman. It's yeah. Like, Superman doesn't answer to the president. But he will take his call. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so so Jenny sets this up, but I'm like, I kind of like that. That was a really cool way of establishing like what kind of leader Jenny is. Mm -hmm. And now she's not like, those fools, those morons, right, those puny humans. Them. No, right. she has to work with them. They're her friends. I see. But she's also not going to invite them to stay on the carrier. <laughs> right, right. right. Uh, there's no room. <laughs> <laughs> so London is attacked next by Kaizen because he wants to get the next knot in, right. the, in the thing. And uh, so the authorities strike uh, and... Uh, okay, so London's being attacked, but it hasn't been... Level. It's like okay. partially destroyed. They destroy well, Big, Big Ben. ben. And it, it, then, that's over. And then the oh, authority yeah. shows up. Yes. Because they heard about it fast enough. That's right. Right. Okay. Yeah, the engineer heard and it. And they that's have the teleporters and right. so forth. That's right. Right. And flyers. Right. So they send everybody out and they and they kick the crap out of them. Uh, Apollo rips the shirt of one of the, what we now know and what we will later uh, as uh, clones. He rips one of the clones' like outfits and mm -hmm. rips off like the logo, which is also as the clone will reveal his teleporter. Like he has a mm. teleportation device. That's how they're able to be anywhere, is that they have teleportation. Kaizen has access to shield technology stolen from Stormwatch, the, the dome over his country, and teleportation technology, which is similar to, but not as good as, the carrier's door technology. Okay. So they have one alive who can't just teleport out. Does, I'm sorry, does, does um, Jack there, is it Jack? Yes. Who yeah. is, um, like, fatality? Powered by a city? Yeah. yeah. Well, he's yeah. using the like, like the might of the city to man, cave in a man's head you know, and then rip it off his body. Yeah, no, that that is definitely his spinal column. Just <laughs> yep, shooting just out the trailing bottom. behind his, his brains head. are literally blasting out of his ears. He pulled, he just punched him so hard, his head removed from his body as it was caving in. I hope I'm never punched that hard. <laughs> I have think a you can be punched that hard. Be. Yeah, unless you are well, punched Superman by was real. Yeah, or a city man. I just, I just want to put it out there. I hope I'm never punched that hard. <laughs> That's fair. Fair to yeah. say. You wouldn't even. Even understand it was happening though, because right. you'd be dead like, before your brain you know, comprehended it. I feel bad it. for my friends. Then you'd have to see this. Yeah, you know, is, I was punched that hard. It is and I'd be like, damn it, she really didn't want that to happen. Yeah, she yeah. said it. It's true. It's, it's very realistically depicted. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas this man is just gently being turned into birds. I feel like that's probably horrific too. <laughs> yeah, because he, he is looking at him like, oh my god, no! <laughs> Actually, that might be worse because he has time to conceptualize what's happening yeah. to him. Yeah, the guy just it was it was light and now it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we could see like, oh my God, like staggering brutality. This is how the authority operates. Right. You know, like they, they, they don't know these guys are clones. They don't know. They, they don't know. They don't have any souls. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they're just like, yeah. You well, also you, you, you leveled, or at least attempted to level London. You attacked. You, you leveled Moscow. Right. Like all bets are off. Right. And some of us are British. Yes. So, right. Oh, Jenny's like, I was Jenny's born British. in London. That's yeah. right, she was wearing the Union Jack. That's right. That's how you know she's British. Right. So She's like, we're saving this one. Yeah. Well, Moscow, and then, you know, things happen. So. It's a shame. <laughs> so the authority, uh, you know, gets into the fray, and they fight these, like, flying death men. Uh, of course, they don't know that they're sent by Kaizen. Right. Uh, while they're coordinating, the engineer creates little, like, bugs, and those bugs sting everyone on the authority, and now they can communicate radio telepathically. Oh. So now they like it's it's the Avengers Bluetooth in the ear. Okay. That's how but they can talk to each other, I yes. guess, and not just to her. But, yes. Oh, I guess they have to think of what they're saying. They don't have to speak it. That's right. Does that mean they can hear everything they're thinking? No. Okay. <laughs> Only when they, they want to intentionally to use it. send it. Yes. I guess it's just very intuitive to operate. Well, it, it, it's magic technology in the form right. of a right, goddamn like if the, insect. If the doctor's like fighting people and he's just like, man, I really would hope we can find some heroin while we're here. <laughs> Cut the chatter, doc. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? This is so disorienting. This big ship that I'm like, well, they've clearly been around for a while. No. Yeah, no, they all just got there. Yeah. Um, like, no, we're like, seeing them literally they've as they've been on the carrier. Oh. They are finally being dispatched. I see. Like, this is maybe week one. 
okay. of being the authority. Like, Did they, they probably... plan to get stung by these communicator and telepathy things? Yeah, like if, they, if she hadn't come up with that. They would just, would they just be like, we need to get selfies? They'd just be that's, yelling at each other. I think yes. that's why she's the engineer. She engineered this. That's right. right. This plan. Yeah, well, yeah. if she hadn't thought of it, I'm sure Jenny would have. And been like, engineer, whip up some Bluetooths. So. <laughs> They're telepathic talk. Bluetooths. <laughs> what? Just what do happened? it! So the team is seemingly effective at slaughtering dozens, if not hundreds, of Kaizen's forces. So Kaizen recalls them and activates their teleportation suits. And so most of them are teleported back. Mm. Uh, meanwhile, the team... Uh, <laughs> they fall through the ceiling yeah. and land in the, like, in the medical... In the area. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, because Kaizen has like absolutely no regard for them whatsoever. Right. In fact, uh, one of the attending physicians is like, don't, don't worry, Kaizen loves us. And then Kaizen to himself says, I love no one. <laughs> that guy's wrong. That guy's wrong. I'm a, I'm a piece of shit. So the one clone that Apollo doesn't kill, yeah. you know, d but his teleporter is broken. So he flies back to Gamora. Oh, he's like follow him. So, they, so Apollo follows him, oh, and he's going so fast. And what you know, Apollo doesn't know is that there's a shield in the way. Okay. And Jenny Sparks, of course, is like, oh no, it's the high all over again. But she doesn't say that, right. which would help anyone. And so instead, she's just really upset about it. So they dispatch the doctor, who then uh, teleports Apollo to another dimension where kinetic energy is converted into music. Thanks. And so uh, he's safe. And of course, Jenny's like super upset about it because you know she lost one to that already. Right. And uh, the other clone who was going there is like, oh, they activated the shield. Oops, splat. So now so the they team's can't. like, well, all's well that ends well. Let's get back to the carrier. So they get back to the carrier to regroup to figure out like, all right, what are we going to do about this? Because now we know. And the shield's impenetrable, I guess. Yes, There's it nothing is. Nothing they yes. can do. Okay. Exactly. But they also have the carrier, and the carrier can make uh, any doorway on Earth. Right. So that also includes inside the barrier. Ah. So. Oh. So that's going to do that. So Jenny pretty, sends. Pretty convenient. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> you wrote it. You know, it's creating the situation. But uh, we also need to see them succeed. Mm. At right. least once. But it seems like it'd be able to succeed. That's not a success. London was in shambles. <laughs> so, uh, so they open a doorway and they, they send Midnighter in. Okay. Midnighter's going to do some recon. Uh, Why don't they just all go in and Because start... the rest of the team needs to do damage control on London. Oh, I see. And uh, he's doing recon. He tries to take out a guard. That guard has enhancements, so it becomes an actual fight. Oh. Uh, but he knows what he's going to do. Yeah, but he knows, he knows what he's going to do, gonna so happen. it only yeah, takes an extra like, three seconds. Uh, exactly. Oh. So, Midnighter's fight, so while Midnighter fights that one guard, <laughs> uh -huh. the authority figures out what the third notch is, and it's Los Angeles. So mm. they go to Los Angeles to like prepare. Right. And there are like a lot more guys <laughs> for Los Angeles than in any other city. Right. Mm. Mostly well, because now they know there's going to be there's people gonna be there. Exactly. So you got to get those cloning vats. Working overtime. Exactly. So how, much, how much time has passed between these attacks? Like hours. Oh, okay. So Midnighter discovers the like cloning facility, and it's within the power station for the shield. And so he's like, all right, this is how we... I, I, I punch things, and this is like a gigantic generator for a country. And I can't like punch a gen. Wait, mm, okay. So you guys defend Los Angeles. I will borrow the carrier because he asks the engineer or whoever while he's on the carrier, like, what's the deal with the carrier? And that's for our benefit, just so we know what the carrier is and how it's mm -hmm. like borderline sentient. You can just ask it for stuff. And so uh, while the team defends Los Angeles, Midnighter uh, calls up a door, goes on the carrier, and takes it for a spin. He tells Jenny on the way. Jenny's like, oh, uh, you can't just use the carrier. And he's like, well, I am. Mm -hmm. uh, we also see some fun displays of powers, like uh, you know, there's just these tons of dudes like flying at like the city, and the doctor's like, nah. So he like unmakes them, but it, in the process of unmaking them, he turns them into like shards. So now oh. there's like millions of dangerous falling objects flying at like high speeds. Oh. So then he turns them into trees, and so oh then God. all of Los Angeles becomes like mostly trees, like just trees start growing everywhere. That is not better. No. Uh, so uh, while that goes on, Midnighter pulls the carrier into our reality, into, into our space, mm. uh, conveniently over Gamora in between the shield, which pops the shield, and then drags the lower half through Gamora into the palace where Kaizen is located. <laughs> oh. Killing Kaizen, destroying the generator, killing all of the clones, and uh, destroying the barrier as well. That's very anticlimactic. I mean, it, you get these, yes. <laughs> it is anticlimactic in as much as the authority gets a task 
they take some time but do accomplish the task. I mean, it, it is the kind of thing that, like, an Avenger story would take eight to ten issues to finish. Yeah. Right. This is four. Well, they have a ship three. that's, like, 35 miles wide exactly. and, like, 50 miles high or whatever. Yeah. And, and so... They, he, and, and they don't, they're don't. they not afraid to kill, so yes. there's no problem that they can't solve in like a few seconds. Exactly. Yeah. And because of the nature of like Brian Hitch's art, we see this like, it's worth shortcutting our story to see this spectacle. Okay. Yeah, we get to see this ship drag itself through a city. Yes. Yeah. So. I, and I guess we just have found, Midnighter just found out that everybody who lives in this city Deserves deserve to die. Enough to <laughs> right, right, right. These, these <laughs> so he can do this. No... Well, okay. So there are people in the city, but like they're seemingly complacent in Kaizen's operations. Right. So I so... guess you know you're gonna lose a few at some point or another. <laughs> after af after the like clones are all killed and you yeah. know, uh, and the clones die once their cloning thing is destroyed. No, the authority just kills all of them. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not like Star Wars, where they blow up the control ship uh, and all the clones just turn off. No, the Authority has to clean up and murder all of them. So they do, and one of them muses about how they're like, it's a lot of dead people. <laughs> and they're like, yes, but it's fewer dead people than there would have been if we didn't do anything. Right, if we weren't here, the whole city would have been destroyed. Exactly. Well, actually, we're heroes. Actually, I mean, yeah. and arguably, since Wildcats isn't here to save them, yes. Yeah, well, and they're so, heroes in the same sense that the Avengers are in the Avengers movie, right? when, like, definitely a lot of people in New York died <laughs> in that true. alien attack. Or in uh, the second Avengers movie, where yeah. a lot of people died yeah. in that city. <laughs> yes. And if you want to really get technical about it, uh, the perpetrator of that attack uh, was a robot built by the chief Well, yeah. Chief, so, you know. But they're like, yay, we win! Yeah. Sure. And but the whole the, world was going to be destroyed well, had they not done something. Uh, Kaizen would have eventually been like, all right, now let me turn my logo this way and that way and right. this way. I mean, eventually all cities would have yeah. fallen. The, arguably, was, the Avengers faced a bigger threat and yes. had more justification for, exactly. for no, yeah. and letting people right. die. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I couldn't find whatever country that is made up of uh, right. on a map. Right. So, I mean, for all we know, the Authority killed more people in Gamora with this fix oh, than yeah. were killed in Los Angeles. Absolutely. Like, they definitely did more damage. They definitely. Yeah. This is more like a war. It, than, it, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. The Authority <laughs> declares war on everybody that they have a problem with. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so, yay, we win! They all high-five each other and go They home. do. And Jenny Sparks is like, no, we won big time because here's the deal, right? Because we are trying to make the world a better place. Mm. She's and like, get some brand deals. <laughs> so, because we did that, the UN will get involved. Like the UN is going to swoop in and clean up in Gamora. When they get there, the UN will discover the cloning technology and the force field technology and all the stuff that Kaizen was using for evil. Mm -hmm. But now that it's out in the open and all governments have access to that information, uh -huh. they can't covet it and hide it and so they'll have to use it for good. And if they don't, we'll just go and kill them. Uh, they don't say that, right. but it's heavily implied by the fact they drove a spaceship through a city. Right. So, you know, in, in, in many respects, I, I think that Jenny's on point there, where it's like, no, because she says they'll use like the cloning technology, not to like, you know, make celebrities last forever, but more to like <laughs> figure out how to grow organs and stuff. Right. And uh, shields will be made for like cars and crap, so there'll be no more auto accidents or whatever. I, mean, I don't know, you, you, you dream up of the ideas. We're, right. we're just here to kill people. Yeah, but this book keeps going, so we should see if that happens, right? Yeah, we don't, <laughs> because we're too busy on the next, uh, on the next, on the next story. That was just one third yes, of the story. Yes, that's right. But that, uh, that took a lot of explanation for like who these characters are. Right, yeah. now we know who they are. Yeah. Now we know them, we know, their, we know the stakes, we know the players, we know their, their, their impossible fortress can be used as a weapon. <laughs> yeah, why don't they just use that all the time? I don't know. Well, well they do, and as much as they use- Well, can't solve every problem by destroying a city, I guess. Uh, I mean, actually, that's funny you should say that because- <laughs> Is that uh, how they solve every problem? That's how they solve the next problem. Oh my god. <laughs> in the next story, we're in Sliding Albion. And Sliding Albion is a England that is in another reality, in a parallel uh, Earth. Yeah, I think Albion is... Another name for England, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> the idea is that in the 16th century, aliens made contact with Europe. And, and how is that different than the real history? 
I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that they built the pyramids. I said that they made contact during the Renaissance. Well, they've been here the whole time, so every well, period in, of time they've made contact. That's true. In this reality, that's what happens, is that they've been here since the, since the 16th century. Oh, really? Century. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah. so they made contact with the with Europe, and they immediately like, interbred, of course, like they're blue aliens, so they're blue blood, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> but the idea is that the aliens set up their shop in Sicily. Okay. I don't know why. But uh, mm -hmm. we need it to be Italy. And they say Sicily a lot, but all of Italy suffers. Are they from... like the mob? Uh, yeah, kind of. They're, they're more like aristocrats or, oh. uh, or, or imperialists. I see. Uh, so they came here, like the aliens came seemingly from like another reality. And uh. they came to Earth and they made contact. And so because it happened out in the open, they like, all of history changed. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the history that we would understand as history. Mm. And so, uh, you know, humans and these uh, aliens interbred, and there was a technological exchange such that it was, because of course these are aliens or spaceships, and we were in the 16th century human beings. Uh, but I'm sure we gave them art and music and crap. But right. uh, they, you know, they set up shop in Sicily and they built this whole, like, new world order. And so as a result, like, England's now called uh, Albion or mm -hmm. Sliding Albion. They call it Sliding Albion because, of course, like, after a while, they start to get bored and wage war on other Earths because, like, they ran out of Earths to conquer, haha. -ha. And so they're like, so they're sliding between realities to do this, okay. and uh, inevitably they set their sights on our Earth or oh. the Wildstorm Earth, okay. right. uh, which is to say the Authority Earth. Because if it was the Wildstorm Earth, yeah, maybe Fairchild or Spartan might have something to say about it. But right. uh, as it stands, it's just the Authority. But okay. they invade and they attack Los Angeles during the reconstruction. Oh. <laughs> well, that's LA's unfortunate. Like, seriously? Yes. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. And uh, so they show up, and it's just, it, you know, it's pandemonium, and the authority gets involved, and Jenny Sparks is like, oh, I know them. Oh. And you're like, what? And Jenny reveals that she, you know, of course, she was born in 1900, that actually Sliding Albion made contact with Earth back in the 20s. Oh. Okay. And so there's been like an information exchange. Oh. You know, to, to stave off war. And so Jenny like went there and spent some time like working in Oh, tandem. like a summer abroad? Yes. Yeah, she went more like a decade or two abroad. <laughs> and so like in her, tw like in the 20s, she had a blast. Like, and she looks like the rocketeer and she's like flying around. She's like <laughs> a space adventurer or at the very least she's a, ter she's actually a terrestrial adventurer, but she's like flying on like cool spaceships and stuff. And uh, inevitably she'll like hook up with a couple of these alien people. Like she'll meet one of them and she'll be like betrothed to one of them and so forth. But that, that's, that's getting ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so she knows who these people are. And she knows about like Regent, the, the Regent of New Albion and yeah, who's like running. very clever in what they call themselves. Yeah, well it's also just like, uh, we're not gonna bring this up again. Mm. This is the first, last, and only time we're ever gonna do this plot about these aliens. Right. Right. Because like, as far as Ellis is concerned, I'm doing 12 issues and then I'm done. Right. Which is weird because he did like a ton of issues of Stormwatch only to give way to the authority. So like, why aren't you doing this for the long game? <laughs> anyway, mm. so uh, it all kind of culminates. It, the reason why like it's weird now is because it all kind of stopped in the 50s. Right. And so for like 45 years or whatever. They weren't attacking. They have been attacking. Right. The last time it happened was in the 50s when like a big gateway, because that's right, the uh, Sliding Albion alien guys have access to the similar technology to the door technology that the carrier has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's like a huge doorway that opens up over London and just like a kind of exhaust shoots out. And it's because during one of their world wars, uh, a biological attack was waged on London, or what they would call London in their reality, and they tried to vent the attack, the biological attack, into our reality as like a method of kind of like trying to, you know, just sure. slide it off of them, and it failed. So we saw a spectacular light show, and that was the end of it. Okay. Uh -huh. And so, as far as Jenny's concerned, like they killed themselves. Now 50 years later, they're back, and so it's like, oh, uh, why? Mm, and why right. are they attacking, you know? And it's right. because, uh, <laughs> actually it's because the, um, the Blue Bloods, so to speak, 
uh, are waning in population. There are fewer of them being born than ever before, and the humans are breeding, outbreeding them. And uh, human women are fragile, and so they're not taking to the pregnancies like I guess they used to, or <laughs> they hoped they would, and so it's resulting in like a problem of population for the blue bloods. Uh, and so they're like, we need to go over there and take their women. I see. Now, uh, Jenny thought that she had won by slaughtering the regent, but it turns out all she succeeded in doing was castrating him. So <laughs> he's pissed. Uh, <laughs> As you can imagine. Right. So Jenny and company, she uh, gets the girls together and they go to a secret prison in England, in the countryside, and interrogate her former first husband, who is an alien, who was part of like, he actually escaped London before the biological attack and slipped here and was promptly arrested and detained. And Jenny like calls the, um, the, the UK government and is like, hey, uh, this is Jenny Sparks, the authority. <laughs> and uh, you have an alien, uh, I need him, and I need to talk to him, so you need to like make arrangements to, to set that up. Right. Okay. And okay. they're like, sure thing, Jenny Sparks, no problem. What? And everyone's like, that's kind of convenient. She's like, yeah, they're going to start monitoring us and trying to take our technology. So engineer, I'm going to need you to like create barriers around us mm. to make sure they get nothing. <laughs> okay. And so they go, she interrogates her husband, and her husband reveals that like, th th what I just told you. Mm. Okay. Uh, you know, region's still alive, uh, and it's gonna be like China all over again. The idea being that uh, in the old, in, in Sliding Albion reality, uh, the regent and company uh, stormed China, killed every man, and turned the whole country into a country. And just every woman and tried to like make, you know, swaths of blue people and failed. And so the regent's gonna bring his agenda to our reality, and so we have to stop him. And it, okay. it would be one thing if, camps was only used once for dramatic effect, but they use it to an obsessive degree from the moment they coin it until the book is over. Right. And so I will spare us by only mentioning it that one time and never again. So, we, so now we have a vested interest in stopping them. Right. Besides the fact that they also attacked us. Right. Like our weakest point. But now we have a super now it's like, interest in stopping yeah. them. Because um, they're coming for our women. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> oh no, it's like the plot of Duke Nukem 3D. <laughs> So, <laughs> Listen, little lady, get inside. Yes, watch before, out. Before the blue people get you. Regent figures out that they have, he uses door technology, or their door technology, uh -huh. uh, to then send more fleets to our reality, but also opens them up because they trace uh, the, the door usage from the carrier because they, they operate on similar wavelengths. Right, right. So he opens up, like, doorways in the carrier and sends the cavalry. And I literally mean that because it's a bunch of freaking, you know, um, English soldiers riding horses, wielding s like sabers, uh, and <laughs> so they are all slaughtered by Apollo, who like blasts them. But especially those horses. Oh yeah, the yeah. horses die because we can't have them running around. Those are interdimensional horses. Who cares? Uh, yeah, they're not even real. So, uh, you know, relatively speaking. <laughs> so they, uh, so Apollo blasts them, but then he's like, he's been on the ship and not on Earth, absorbing sunlight for like a couple of days, if not oh. weeks, so he's really weak, and so they're like, well, we're gonna need Apollo, so they uh, drop him from outside. Like, yeah, so they go, out, they go outside and they just throw him outside. <laughs> and they're like, well, you'll be- Come you'll back be, with your super again. You know, <laughs> hey, do not call us unless you have actual superpowers. That's right, you are useless. <laughs> you are not an authority unless you have powers. I mean, he does have them, it's just that they're not working right now. So like, they go above the cloud cover, they just go, huh. <laughs> And they're like, well, the 11 seconds he's above the clouds, he'll be able to absorb all the radiation he needs to do it. Oh, that's all it takes? Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, uh, Engineer oh, is really- Oh, he's got fast charging on. Yeah, that's right. He's cool. Uh, so Engineer's pissed about the whole, you know, camp situation, so right. she's just like, all right, well, so she turns her arm into a big, cool uh, machine gun, blows away all the horses and the cavalry people uh, that Apollo didn't kill already. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okie dokie. Now we know that they've got that. Also, the, the these guys like really messed up the carrier. Right. So, uh, but the doctor, uh, now he needs something to do, so he's gonna like connect with the ship telepathically and figure out where it's hurting and then use his magic powers to heal the ship. Okay. Exactly. Everybody's got their orders. Oh, is that them hugging? Yes. 
Oh, they kiss. Yeah, he kisses him on the on cheek. On the cheek. Yeah. Like, oh my god, this is this might as well be pornography. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nice. <laughs> it, it's just it's, it's kind of sweet. It's just nice. Yeah, right. They go to the Regent Universe. They bring the carrier with them. They convince the carrier like to go to there. To go there, and so the carrier does, and then the Independence Day, the capital. Oh, nice. Uh, actually, it's funny because like you'd think the ship has like cannons and stuff, but they don't actually know if the ship has weapons. So Jenny just uses her powers and blasts them. She can shoot electricity that's like strong enough to blow up a building. Yeah. Well, yeah, because they want Independence Day. It's a, well, yeah. Yes. So now she has to be able. She's to She's the spirit of the twentieth century. She will. Is she gonna die in a year since yeah. nineteen ninety nine? Uh, it's funny you should ask that. So, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, how about the twenty first century? <laughs> I guess we don't need her anymore. We need, we got to have we need the, another one. The spirit of 21st oh. century. That's exactly right. That's exactly what happens. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. So Thanks for her. The, uh, so, Does so, she know that? Yeah. Oh. oh. Clock's ticking. I know. Yeah. So uh, they dispatch um, Jack and Midnighter to kill Regent, and they do. Okay. You know, okay. Re, uh, well, yeah, one guy is magic and the other one knows what he's going to do. Yeah, yeah, but Regent's fast and smart and is old, and so he's like, I'm... I, we're evenly matched, you and I. And then right. uh, Jack just uses the city to blast in between the regent. Just just explodes him. Nice. I guess they're in. They're in, they're in his alternate city. London yeah, or in, whatever. They're yeah. in alternate London. Exactly. And it's hurting because like regent doesn't have any like regard for it. So right. the city's more than happy to give Jack all the power he needs. It doesn't come up. It's all kind of like under the surface. I gotta say the, the city thing. Not not buying it. Not not. Not my thing. I think it's kind of neat. I, I think it's just a it's, neat, it's like, weird... He's like Superman when he's in a city. Right. And otherwise he's just a guy. But even then, like, <laughs> it's it's very selective. Like, like, all you have to do is just not be in a city and this guy is useless. Yeah, yeah. but it's so rare that that's the case. They can teleport no so they can and, keep him in a city most of the time. That's true. And, like, no one's going to try and take over the world by going to Kansas. I, I give it, I'm going to give it a shot now. <laughs> Let me know how that story turns out. Right. So they kill Regent, so that's, that's good. But we still have to beat... The blue, there's, there's like, it's an entire race. Right. So what are we going to do? So they, they call the doctor, and what they do is they have the, they, they, they. Doctor, they can, we need you to commit genocide. Yes, and so he does. And so what the doctor does is they're like, all right, well, they, all of the aliens. All of the blue bloods are exactly the same mindset, and they're all bad. Uh, it's more like they've allowed so, this to happen, and. Uh, they're too dangerous to be kept alive. That's right. So look. This, we're, we're solving problems. So here's yeah. what we're gonna do. Uh, so the it's doctor- Nazi Germany. We're just laying waste. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so the doctor, uh, oh, and they're all of course located in Italy or Sicily, but like it, the whole the whole country's gotta go. So- <laughs> Oh. So- I the, thought they were in London. I'm a little confused. Well, they were, no, the Regent was in London, oh. but the rest of the aliens operate out of Sicily. No, they keep referring to the Blue Bloods as Sicilians it's because so I guess weird. they just liked being there. It never like we don't see a lot of Sicily, hmm. and there's no explanation as to why it, they brought it was that the closest to where they live. Right. Or yeah, exactly. They really like. Like, well, oh, it's warmer here than <laughs> it is in London. I mean, so. certainly that's true. Yeah. So what they do is he's like, all right, so Earth is hurtling through space, mm -hmm. and it's spinning. So I'm going to allow that, I'm gonna use my doctor powers to allow that to happen, but Italy stays where it is right now. <laughs> and so, this, well, no, it's book. more like, it, okay, so the Earth is spinning, like Earth is spinning through space right now, right? Right. But I'm gonna have Italy stay where it was, right here, so. Oh, so it gets left behind in space. Everyone on Italy <laughs> gets left behind. Oh my god. This is So they just asphyxiate in the vacuum of space? Yeah, that's right. This book is like a bunch of like people playing D D. Yes. And being like, okay. Okay, wait, okay, how wait. powerful am I? <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. I oh, this is what I want to do. Right. So right. you tell me if I can. <laughs> I want to hold Italy in the same space. It you know, because it's like the, the most recent criticism of time travel, where it's like, oh yeah, you can go back in time, but you know the Earth is moving through space, so you're gonna be in 1989, but uh, over there. Right. Oh, and I, in, roll, in space. I rolled a 20, and with my modifiers, it gives me uh, 35 yeah. on my skill check. Okay, then you not only can <laughs> teleport all of uh, the population of Italy into space, but also you can manipulate the oceans to wash away the city and anything that they have. So they do. Yep, by now everyone on that piece of land is exploded and frozen, unprotected in space. Yeah. 
And so they're like, I just committed genocide. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. And so Jenny's like, hang on, let me get the comms. And so she communicates with everyone on this planet. She's like, we killed all the aliens. Your Earth is yours. Be good or we'll be back. And then they leave. Wow. They're like, pizza? <laughs> right? Hey, well, not at Italy, unfortunately. Not this one. Not this one. Okay, let's hear the next one before I, I yes. ask. Yeah, okay. we got a whole other story. Yeah, the the well, so you know we have to we have to ratchet it up. Some green spore-like creatures fire themselves at the Earth. Okay, uh, how will um, destroying a city come into this one? Well, they they, they attack a city. They, they actually they land uh, <laughs> the bulk of them land in Africa, and generate like a big kind of like swelling, writhing, slimy insectoid mass? kind of like mass. Uh, but then they, you know, they, they attack a number of cities as well. Oh. Okay, cool. That's what attack these astronauts. Yeah, well, that's the, you know, they're the first line of defense. That's, <laughs> that's not the first, they're not the first line of defense, well, they're, they're scientists! Well, they're, they're just in the way. They're in the way. They're oh. in between. They're in between the moon I think, and... I think they'd be quite upset if you told them they were the first line of defense. Uh, yeah, well, they don't have time to think about it. It's very statistically <laughs> unlikely that the space shuttle would happen to be exactly in, in between the moon Well, no, 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 they just go. Like, they go there, they are, uh, Operating on a higher plane of existence. Does, does he say something about having a lousy day too? Or? He does not. He just he <laughs> actually calls Houston and he's like, "I'm gonna die, quick!" Uh, <laughs> oh my her, god! Tell him I love her. Come on. He gets a lot out. He says, uh, "These are the last words of a dead man." Tell Carly I always loved her. Tell my little Anne I'm going to miss her so much, and may God have mercy. Blah blah blah. Like, he gets a lot of yeah. words out yeah. that we get to read. Mm -hmm. That's very sad. It is very sad. Yeah. And gratuitous. It's true. Uh, <laughs> the doctor gets visited by his previous iteration who's like, uh, oh, yeah. you were about to face something you've never, you couldn't even possibly comprehend. I don't so know. Get your <laughs> get your crap together. <laughs> okay. Get your shit. So the doctor calls everybody up and he's like, hey everybody, okay, so um, here's a big problem. <laughs> he proceeds to explain that. Um, Can we drive our ship into it? Mm. No, it's. Yes. Uh, Oh. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> not to, well, uh, not the same it's, way, It's going to be a little more complicated than that. Yeah. But they're literally covering the entire moon. Like, the moon is that, turning black. Yes. I guess that is a little bit of a critique on superhero books, though, where it's like, you could just keep doing the same thing right. over and over right. again. Like, why don't you? Yeah, like, right. like, if it worked the first time, why don't you just try it again? Yeah. yeah. Like, in the, like, at the end of Dark Crisis, when, when Black Adam gives all the Justice League his power, and then they all, like, are able to save the day, even though they aren't somehow. And it's like, why doesn't Black Adam do that all the time? Yeah. Yeah. This is the book where they do. Yeah. It's like we still manage to make it take several issues, even yeah. though like nothing really happens. Well, no, because it's like, like the bad guys show up and then like we attack them and they can't fight us because we're so strong and then and then that's over. Yeah. Well, and because it's all like widescreen and cinematic, mm -hmm. it takes all the pages to right. do that very right. simple thing. But but what's funny is if you made like any one of these four story arcs into a movie, it would be like twenty minutes long. That's why it's twelve twelve. Right. <laughs> That's three acts. Makes me wonder what the movie's gonna be. <laughs> That's like literally my question well, was. I was like, so wait, which, what, which what? one? Which one? There's no, I, I mean, I would argue none of these would be good for the movie, but I don't know. I also get why James Gunn wants to see a movie of this. I don't get how it would set up anything in the DC universe. I suspect that James Gunn really likes the authority and is like, there is no other way they will ever make an authority movie so, unless um, I make it part of some kind of grand scheme. Maybe he's not going to do something no. from this. Maybe he'll do something from the Miller one. Uh, they get the update about what the hell this triangle in space is. Mm -hmm. um, so God is a Lovecraftian being that seeded the earth, right? Like, Wait, don't say right. Like, <laughs> like you, know this. you know what I mean? Was like God, God. The, God, the idea that you could fathom as God because it's a sentient being that predates humanity and seeded the earth. Mm -hmm. So like our creator, okay. This is a creature that kind of like made everything and it decides to leave to tour the galaxy. Okay. And while it's gone, the moon is formed which is enough to knock all the crap that it was off of the Earth. So what's left is what were the building blocks for life. So like everything that you know about the origin story of life on Earth is the same. I see. But when it was an unhabitable place, 
This is saying that God formed Earth. Yes, like, oh, yeah. like put the pieces together like it swirled and it, then it left. It swirled the matter together. It wasn't where it was in the orbit. The moon pushed it into orbits. When it gets back, uh, it's like, yo. Yes. Someone touched my shit. Yes. Right. Someone moved my planet. Yes, he engineered the universe and made, the reason why Earth is so perfect for life is because like that's his that's his retirement home. He's yeah, but like, it's not. I, like, no, but he like, put it in a different place. Yeah, he put it someplace else. Oh, that's yeah. right. So yeah. he's like, this is wrong. And then, and then no, the, like, moon, the moon, the moon bumped it, bumped yeah. it out and, like, of orbit. Well, the planet that off. hit the Earth that made the moon. Exactly. Bumped. Yeah. So that was. So it's not so that it matters bad. there. It's that he actually physically created the Earth. Yes. Yeah. And like everything that like would later come to become light. So then the moon. So it, it doesn't come crashing. <laughs> it doesn't, it, it it's, fires like crap. It, hasn't Tokyo been through enough? I know it's shelled by the like god creature. Uh, it's and not it's like, Godzilla. No. No. It's. Black goo, yep. God. So uh, they find out that like the trajectory is Tokyo, so they send Midnighter Apollo and team. Like you know, they go there. What the hell is it, Midnighter? Well, Midnighter's do like, okay, don't come here. It's, it's doomsday. Like we're never gonna make it. Right. <laughs> it's a. It's. I'm watching There's too Apollo. Many of them. There's too many of them, and, it, and it, it like once they land, they like explode into horrible tentacle monsters that are killing people. He's like, oh no, I can't punch that. Right. Like we can't win against this. It's right. it's too big. So. They figure out, like, okay, well, the problem is the triangle. Uh, Apollo, leave Tokyo. We'll deal with Tokyo. You got enough to worry about. Exactly. And you're wearing a hat. <gasps> I uh, am. No one knows what that means. Nope. Mm. Apollo, I need you to sterilize the moon. So Apollo's like, okie doke. So he goes into the moon, he fires all of his energy, and he kills everything that was on the moon. Oh. But, like, thankfully, the moon is already dead and sterile anyway, so, like, it doesn't really change anything for us. Right. So Jenny takes the engineer and Swift to Africa to see what's going on there, and they can't breathe because the it's entity... It's like replacing the atmosphere it's, or whatever. It's changing it back to what it was. Like, it's, it's, it's like, unterraformed. Yeah. It's also putting, like, dicks, dicks everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know. They... Right, I'm setting a theme here. Engineer attacks the, the creature that is, like, that seeks to unterraform Earth. Right. Okay. Meanwhile, they're like, all right, we've got to deal with like the the god up there. Right. So they f they they convince the ship that like whoever left it in the bleed is not coming, but like the authority will never betray it or ignore it or leave it alone. So we need to leave. We need to go into space and, and kill that thing. And so the ship's like, all right. So they all uh, leave. And they fly through actual space, which the ship isn't interested in doing normally because it's like, you know, waiting for its master. It's a little too boring. Yeah, it's a little boring. So they go uh, to the triangle god shape in the sky, and the ship is like a red blood cell to it. That's how small it is. Okay. So they oh. fly in through one of the pores, uh, and they and they and their plan is like, all right, we're gonna kill it from inside. That's right. The plan. But you're super teeny tiny. That's right. Right. Like an infection. If it's just one of you. But yeah, you're not going to multiply, are you, inside no. of it? <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll figure it out when we get there. Also, I see. Uh, Jenny uh, checks her out. Uh, earlier in the story, Jenny looks in the mirror, she checks out her eyeballs, and they're like all bloodshot. And she's like, happy birthday, Jenny, because it's December 30th, 1999. Oh. Oh. It's coming to the end. Oh, no. Now, we know that, but as the, sto as the story didn't explain to you at any point until now that, like, her time runs out at the end of the century. Right. So they go in. Midnighter's like... Ship. It's cool. Right? Uh, Midnighter's like, hey, um, if this thing is like a creature... If it's like a, a living being, and we're small like an infection, it stands to reason it would have, like, antibodies. Uh. And so they're attacked by a previous infection oh. that has been in it for so long from God knows where that it has gained sentience and built like crystalline structures. Like it, it exists. It's like a symbiotic being. I thought you were going to get Stormwatch. <laughs> right, and Stormwatch. They're like, get out of here. Uh, so no, it's, uh, it, it's so there's like this, this whole society of aliens, but they're not like humanoid aliens. They're something we can't fathom, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So they're like, all right, well, we got to blow them up. And uh, Swift is like, no, we're not going to kill these things. We've killed too many people already. <laughs> like we, we've, we've committed genocide too much in the last like, month and a half. Right. We've so, only been a team for like a week, and we've already <laughs> murdered like multiple civilizations. <laughs> Let's not. So, uh, they, so they, they, they flip on the communicator and they're like, hey. Like, they're communicating 
through all frequencies, in all languages, whatever. You know, they use magic technology to communicate with it. Who cares? How they expect the infection race to understand what they're saying, mm -hmm. but they do. And they're like, listen, we're coming in here to kill what you're in, so vacate. Right. And they do. Uh, oh. And then they're attacked by the antibodies. And uh, Midnighter's like, told you so. And you're like, what? And that's the kind of humor you come to expect in The Authority. It's like that kind of thing. Great. And it's like lame AF. I'm yeah. just like, oh, that's not funny, but it looks so cool. Fine. So right. they go, and then they're, and it's, it's funny because like, this is the most tedious chapter in all of them. Mm. Because. Well, it's very green for one. Well, that's it's true. just visually <laughs> unappealing. It, it is, but you know, I get it. You know, it's, it's atmospheric. Right. But I like green. I like it too, but it's sickly green. Uh, yeah, it's like a gross yellowish green. So, they're, but they're flying through here, and you know, it's like, all right. So it's it is our progenitor, in in a sense. It's the it's the biggest, oldest thing that has a consciousness in the known universe. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna kill. And it. we're gonna kill it. That's messed up. Right, but it's it's it or but it, us. But it's it or us, exactly. Like right. we have to kill. And God. we'll always pick us. Not of course. Us <laughs> yeah. I would. Right. So, they. Uh, but but like that's the story. Four issues. <laughs> four issues. <laughs> yeah, it's twelve issues. It's four issues a chapter. So like, right? And then they. they but so they're like, we gotta go. We gotta deal with the antibodies. But oh, it's not antibodies. But then it is antibodies. And then they go like, all right, uh, Jenny's starting to die. And she's like, we need to get there before the time runs out. And they're like, what time? Like, there's a ticking clock, but no one, but, but, but Jenny but knows one it. seventh knows there's a ticking <laughs> clock. And right. so they get to. <laughs> or that that guy splatted against the shield. Right? Jenny like, is, Jenny is the spirit of the 20th century. She's the keeper of secrets. <laughs> oh. That's true. <laughs> so she, they, so they're like, all right, fuck it. Like, screw going through its blood vessels and trying to figure, cause they're like, where's the brain? I don't know. It's a triangle. Like, who knows what direction <laughs> you're going? So they're like, all right, screw it. Like, uh, the electrical impulses are like, heavier that way so they just start firing shit they're just like go this way and they just start like blasting through like walls and then until they get to the brain and it is a brain right like it just a looks like a brain, brain. Yep. like and a so, human brain yes. yes why would it look with like, like folds that? Of oh, stuff. Or, a, or a dolphin brain yeah it's shaped like a triangle but it's got a brain that looks like a brain that way we and, know what and it it's is got like in, in it, you know is lovecraftian in origin yes yeah. and it's got tentacle things that it shoots out mm -hmm. but it has a human look well this is the thing this is you know the, it makes those things i guess it's brains itself, but... look like this in other animals right like yeah. squirrels mon monkeys dolphins I it's guess, a brain yeah all right i guess if it left behind the building blocks Right. Of life, maybe this is. May, yeah. yeah, if it's made of like cells. One day and we'll stuff. all exactly. become big floating triangles. Oh, I can't wait. So, why Jenny, would an like, organic being evolve into the shape of a perfect triangle? I don't think it does. I mean, like, I don't think it's. I don't think it evolved from anything. I think it's like. This right. Is the it's thing. just. Maybe, I've always been a triangle. Maybe it's like one of those. Like. <laughs> I don't um, know what else to pick. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Japanese watermelons. They grow oh, yeah. them into. Yeah, they grow them like cubes squares. And stuff? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cubes. Yeah, it was the universe was so small and in the shape of a of, of a pyramid. <laughs> right. And then it eventually broke out. Anyway, so Jenny like flips on the communicator and she's like, hey, um, sorry God, it's you or me. And then she just uses so much of her powers, it like shuts the brain off. Cause like it, it, if you were to put an electrical charge through a brain, it would die. Sure. And so it does. Like it doesn't right. even, it doesn't even have death throws. It doesn't go like, ah. Right, it just it's shuts just, off. Just, nah. It's brain dead. Just, I flipped the switch and it's dead now. And, I killed God. Yeah, I killed God. And then she dies. And she's like, oh, bye everybody. And they're like, um, it's 1999. The, the century ends in 2001. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, but most people think the century ends in the year 2000. And so that's how my like existence works. Like it's, it's public opinion that affects the spirit of the 20th century aspect of who I am. So like if most people think the century ends in the year 2000, then that's when I end. <laughs> Okay. So she dies. And then uh, a, a, another one, like she is reincarnated in a baby. You know, That's so how this ends? If you love comics and you hate Watchmen, you might like this book. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> yeah, except you, but like, I don't know if it's <laughs> not being its own attempt at a Watchmen, where it's like, because Watchmen. That's the thing. Isn't cool. No, I know. <laughs> but people. But think, this is. Right. <laughs> That's why I love it. Yeah, but is it making fun of you? 
What? I think it's cool. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. It's just great. Yeah. This was a trip. The last book we did had the least amount of substance ever. Yes. Hmm. And this... I don't know if it has substance. Does because, or doesn't? There's a lot happening. Yes. Like, the other book didn't have a lot happening. No. Yeah. And this is like, how about everything? Yeah. Yeah. With no time to really think about everything that's happening. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I guess. The Authority from Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch. Comics, baby. <laughs> See you guys next week. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. Keep reading. You gonna tell them where they can find it, or? I mean, it'll be in the cut. I mentioned yeah, it earlier, yeah, you know, somewhere. I, I worked it in. You said it right at the beginning. I did. Oh. Like, I know, I snuck it in. Like, Mr. Sunday is like, uh, so we're gonna talk about uh, this crazy movie called Kazam. It uh, stars uh, Sinbad, and uh, oh, by the way, like, leave, leave a like if you could, it'd help us out a roll. Like, that's the one He's that doesn't exist. The yeah, that's the one that doesn't <laughs> yeah. exist. He's the spirit of the 21st century. Oh, Mr. Sunday. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Him and uh, that other guy, whose the other name one. I don't remember. Mason? It's Mason. <laughs> no, the, we, we were on the show. Like, they mentioned us. Uh -huh. And uh, he's like, and, oh, and, right. and, and, and uh, Mr. Sunday was like, yeah, you know, it's like, it's Sal and Tiffany, and what are the other guys' names? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, I, I don't know. And he goes, it's Ethan and Ben, man, come on. And he's like, no, I don't, I don't know the names. And I'm like, how dare you? <laughs> They're so funny. They're so funny. Yeah, and they have such an incredible, like, they're, yeah. they're. No, they're just, they're, it's. Yeah. It's right. very entertaining. Right? Show. Yeah, yeah. No, they're they're an Edgar Wright movie. We're a Kevin Smith movie. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've come to terms with that. It's okay. That's fine. There are a couple of good ones in there. Yeah, we're before. Yeah, before. We're, we're the newest universe. <laughs>